Hello everyone and welcome to my term project presentation. I am very excited to present to you today the first ever Jeep exclusive dealership that's going to be offered in the United States. I have here right on my intro page the lineup of all the vehicles that we're going to be selling here at Morris Jeep. And I'm going to give you a introduction and a detailed uh, synopsis of how this dealership is going to operate from start to finish. So basically, as I said, this is a Jeep exclusive dealership. Uh, traditionally, Chrysler dealerships incorporate uh, the Jeep brand, um, but we actually believe that it is going to be most beneficial and uh, most important to our, our loyal Jeep customers to offer them a Jeep exclusive dealership that allows them to uh, just experience and interact with each other uh, with their Jeep vehicles, which we know they cherish so much. Uh, this is actually the first of its kind, um, and we have really organized, we believe, an exceptional business plan to really entice and uh, capture the hearts of our Jeep enthusiasts. We're going to offer new and used vehicle sales as well as parts and accessories. So when you come into Jeep, you can expect to buy anything Jeep related. It doesn't matter if it's a jacket, if it's a Jeep vehicle, uh, if it's a OEM part for repair, uh, you'll be able to find it here at Morse Jeep. So our vision statement is very critical to uh, the success of our, our, our dealership. And it's to become the nation's Jeep dealer. And when I say that, I mean, we want to become the iconic dealership and the epitome of Jeep dealerships in the United States. Uh, we just really want this to be a Jeep haven where Jeep enthusiast dreams can come true. We want them to come in and feel like they are uh, just extremely well understood and taken care of start to finish, whether they're buying a part, buying a Jeep. Uh, we are just excited to show them how much we appreciate their Jeep loyalty. And our mission statement is to cater to all Jeep lovers by fulfilling all of their service and sales needs. We want to provide the best customer service and most genuine love for their Jeep products by being honest, thoughtful, and caring with all of our customer interactions. Uh, we will be completely dedicated to providing our Jeep lovers the best care and respect they deserve by displaying a share of love for our beloved Jeep products. And we have a few core values that we believe uh, reflect our our vehicles that we sell and the customers that we sell them to. And those core values are exploration, desire, liberty, and honesty. Now, these all seem like uh, terms that you've heard before, but when you blend them in with our sales um, approach and with how we want to run our dealership, uh, they really bring out the best in our employees and our customers because um, we believe that um, RMG customers are the best customers in the world. So our goals and objectives. Um, the main goals, uh, again, is to make sure that we're focusing on the point that it's a Jeep-only dealership. We don't want any other manufacturers or any other brands incorporated into this. This is just for Jeep. Um, we we know Jeep people love to customize. We love that we know they love to personalize their Jeep. Um, there's a lot of fads and trends over the years related to Jeep. And we just feel like this is our opportunity to kind of bring that all together. Um, to go over just some of the um, kind of inner workings of our dealership, uh, I'm going to be the dealer principal and owner, um, and the general manager is going to be Evan Hay. Um, he's basically going to be responsible for a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff, tracking inventory, uh, s interacting with sales deals, uh, being kind of the mediator between sales person, customer, and um, getting the deal closed. Now, one of the most important things in establishing this dealership was to get the location correct. Uh, we, we sought out three different locations, all pretty fairly close to each other. Um, but we found that um, our ultimate uh, decision was going to be actually on a bit smaller of a piece of property, but the location was phenomenal. Um, it's located at near 
a major interstate interchange. Um, there's a Costco, a Kroger, a Cabela's, and we were really, really um, trying to make sure that we put this in a location where other things uh, related to Jeep kind of um, can kind of fall into place around it. You know, your sporting goods stores, um, things of that nature, things that are going to attract um, our Jeep customers, not just our dealership, you know, the, the, the place around it, the entire environment. Our market is, um, it's very unique, but uh, it's very broad. Um, if we look at the current automotive industry and the market as it sits right now, um, it's, you know, it, it's a pretty um, hot market, uh, especially for domestic vehicles. The economy is in the world is pretty good, but the United States economy is doing very well. So we believe that um, a lot of these um, vehicles, uh, produced domestically, um, especially Jeep, are going to be uh, fairly easy to sell. Um, many people in a good economy can um, bring out the best in their personality and buy things that they like rather than things that they need. And we're not only going to be supplying vehicles to our customers that um, are going to be utilized every day and are going to be practical, but we're also going to offer them vehicles that they can really feel like uh, they blend into their personality. And that's really what we're after here. Um, if you look at the market needs in Centerville, which is where the dealership's gonna be located at, um, online access was a huge deal. 91% um, of car buyers use the internet as a general tool for finding their vehicle. And they use innovative user-friendly websites to navigate inventory, that's what we want. We want people to be able to get on if they can't come into the dealership we want them to experience the dealership on the internet uh, from the click of a button. We know that people access uh, the internet from their smartphones, from their tablets, from their laptops. Everything is connected to the internet. So we believe that our next best option, if they can't be physically at the dealership, is to get them uh, interacting uh, on the internet uh, through our dealership. Um, now, the area that this is going to be located at in Centerville, um, it's a market that consists of about 47% families. So we know that um, cargo space and seating availability is going to be an important factor. Um, Jeeps traditionally were a smaller kind of off-road capable utility vehicle, but we've kind of evolved uh, to meet uh, a more broader market. And with this, we have uh, four-door options in all of our vehicles. Um, and we actually offer uh, seven passenger seating in uh, the Grand Cherokee, uh, which is a very, very good option if you have a family. So as far as the lineup goes with Jeep, um, this lineup, it's really for the adventure-seeking uh, outdoor uh, sport enthusiast. Uh, but we also offer practical vehicles for everyday use. Uh, families, uh, people that are on the go that need to haul stuff around, things of that nature. Uh, we do also have a brand new uh, vehicle we're very excited about, which is the Jeep Gladiator. Um, it's actually basically a Jeep Wrangler that's in pickup truck form. So what we've done here is we've basically allowed Jeep to become a vehicle for every single possible uh, lifestyle and if you have a lifestyle that is suited for a truck but you still love Jeep uh, you're going to love the Jeep Gladiator so we're very excited to be able to incorporate that into our our Jeep dealership uh, the other vehicles uh, the Grand Cherokee it's a classic um, it's really known for being stylish and offering all the convenience features you could ask for uh, it's luxury at its finest uh, very comparable to some of the uh, European models of uh, Land Rover, uh, Porsche, mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature. Um, also Audi, uh, BMW, things like that. Uh, we were very competitive with them. And then of course we brought back the Cherokee in 2014. Um, and the Cherokee has always been known for its unmatched off-road capability. We also have the Compass and Renegade, which are for you know the economical, um, fuel efficient, mm -hmm. and less expensive kind of vehicle really 
uh, with younger people in mind, uh, specifically people just starting out driving, but they still want to drive a Jeep. And one of the things we believe dearly at Jeep is that not only taking care of your customers is very important and it reflects well on your business and how it's going to operate, but we know that the personnel and the employees at our dealership, um, if we don't take care of them, customers are going to pick up on that and we're going to have a hard time uh, having this entire culture and atmosphere of Jeep that we're so excited about uh, to really be successful and positive on our employee, on our customers rather. Um, so basically just a quick um, synopsis of our personnel and kind of what their jobs, their responsibilities are going to be. Um, the owner, as I said, I'm the owner and dealer principal, um, but I'm going to be very hands-on. I'm going to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations, but I'm going to let my management team run their departments as they see fit. You know, I don't want to be, I don't believe in micromanagement and I don't believe in an overarching owner um, because that typically does not go over well uh, for the employees. Um, I'm just going to ask that the GM be very, very um, upfront and um, very interactive with me as far as the financial condition of the dealership um, and also interacting with the general sales manager, which we'll talk about, who is going to be basically responsible for all the transactions of new and used vehicles. Uh, he's also going to be responsible for appraisals. Um, and I really expect him or her to uh, forecast the financial loss and gain in all sales aspects um, of the dealership. And he will report this information to the GM uh, who can report it to me. Now the GSM, of course, can uh, interact with me also. Um, but we believe uh, that the GM and the GSM um, relationship is very uh, important. Uh, the service manager uh, is going to basically oversee all the operations of the service department. This is going to include hiring and firing employees, uh, training the advisors, uh, getting the service technicians and loop technicians uh, trained and ready to go, um, and just making sure that scheduling and everything is cohesive and in good working order back there. Um, at Jeep, we are very, very, uh, we're very, uh, very big on the idea of offering a very uh, productive service department and a very effective service department. Uh, we know that uh, people, when they, when they, our customers buy a vehicle, a lot of times after that process, that process is very, very uh, short in terms of overall timeline of the ownership of the vehicle. Uh, service is going to uh, be interacting with them for the majority of their uh, ownership experience. Uh, so we believe that we want to um, carry the uh, service department mindset uh, over through exactly how we do in the sales department. So we want to make sure that the atmosphere, the culture, and the positivity is going to be reflective on uh, our service department. Uh, in terms of the parts department, it's the same situation. Uh, we believe that um, the buying and selling of parts and accessories is a major component of our dealership. And we're going to make sure that the parts manager is going to oversee everything in the parts department and make sure that that's always happening. We're always taking care of our customers and we are uh, making sure our parts consultants and our parts drivers and all of our support staff in the parts department are uh, working very well with uh, our parts and accessories customers. Parts manager also report the financial status of the department to the GM as will the service manager because um, we want to ensure profitability and customer satisfaction. We believe there's a balance and we believe we'll be able to meet that if we have all of our managers working together and understanding uh, where we're at financially and where we're at from a customer satisfaction uh, standpoint. It's also going to be the responsibility of the warranty administrator and the office manager to track our, our customer service and uh, track our Google reviews and our online reviews and make sure that we are always addressing any customer needs, uh, especially outside of the dealership. Sometimes somebody may have had a bad experience and they don't speak up about it in the facility and they write a review. Um, and we wanna make sure we're always connected to our customers somehow. 
So in terms of our marketing and sales strategy, uh, the growth strategy at Morris Jeep is simple yet effective. Um, we're really emphasizing um, technology and a digital presence like never before. Uh, we believe in our online forum that we're going to create on our website. Uh, we're going to do blogging and digital media and advertisement. We're going to be very, very interactive with our customers, uh, people that have already purchased from us, as well as people that may purchase from us in the future. Uh, we, we know that it's so important this day and age to be uh, connected everywhere from a technology standpoint, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, we're going to utilize digital media. Uh, this includes everything on our social media. We're going to be on Facebook, we're going to be on Twitter, and we're going to have our very own dedicated official website, which will be linked from all of our social media. Um, you can basically learn anything you want about Morris Jeep digitally uh, through these venues and uh, we believe there's also going to be limitless advertisement and fun displayed on our social media to just really always keep our customers engaged even after the buying process they're going to be fascinated and intrigued at all times by our, our dealership. Um, of course online retail uh, we're going to offer a full line of, of um, uh, parts and accessories as well as uh, add-ons, performance parts, and exhaust systems, things that r people really like to add on after they purchase. And this is also going to include nostalgia, uh, which will be available at the click of a button to our customers. Uh, we want to be the uh, stronghold of nostalgic um, accessories and things that you can purchase uh, to relive your Jeep past or vehicles of old or things of that nature. Uh, we're also going to utilize magazines, and that may sound kind of um, kind of uh, old-fashioned, maybe, or kind of un, uh, uh, confusing to some people. And the reason magazines are so critical in a Jeep uh, dealership in this environment is because our Jeep customers, believe it or not, um, basically use um, spend a lot of their time still in a lot of these four-wheel drive and off-road uh, magazines uh, just because of the pictures and how you can really um, highlight uh, how your vehicle performs off-road with the utilization of some of these performance parts in terms of suspension lifts and wheels and tires and things of that nature. Um, so we know that if we can advertise in those magazines we can allow people to actively look at these magazines and have a vision for their Jeep and have a, a, a very exciting um, idea about how they want their Jeep to look and with the flip of a page they can find their facility where they can not only come in and have this have their Jeep customized and have all these things done to their Jeep but they can buy the accessories they can have it installed they can do everything they want and make their basically whatever Jeep they see in a magazine come to life uh, right in their hometown so we're very excited about that. We're also going to spend about 10%, and that was 30% uh, in magazines. We're also going to spend about 10% on uh, television and listening to the radio, things of that uh, nature. In terms of the finances of the dealership, um, floor planning, uh, we're going to go through Chrysler Capital. This is pretty much the uh, going rate for any kind of Chrysler startup, uh, which Jeep is affiliated with FCA, so we're going to use Chrysler Capital. It's going to be a floor plan loan of about $5 million at an interest rate of 5% for 36 months. Uh, we're, of course, going to do new, uh, new vehicle sales. Uh, our expectations financially, we're going to sell 25 new vehicles per month, um, and the average sale price is going to be about $32,000, uh, which makes our average dealer cost about $28,000. So our projected first year gross sales is going to be about $9.6 million. Um, and our expected projected first year dealer cost is going to be about $8.4 million. So our gross profit um, in our first year is going to be around $1.2 million. And we're very excited about that. Those are phenomenal numbers uh, for, a, for a startup and for new vehicle sales because the margins are so tight with new vehicles uh, nowadays. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Uh, the used vehicle sales, uh, we're expecting to really hit used vehicles very hard. Um, we're going to sell 30, 30 units per month, and we believe this number is going to continue to grow. Uh, an average sale price on the used end, about 22000 And one of the really 
uh, exciting things about used vehicle sales in the Jeep world is that uh, Jeep, Jeep vehicles are very well known for uh, maintaining uh, their, their value uh, and not uh, depreciating quickly like a lot of new vehicles do. Um, you can actually lease a Jeep Wrangler and while you're paying the depreciation on, pre, pre, depreciation on it, uh, you can come back and pretty much buy the vehicle and make money on it because uh, it depreciates so slowly. Uh, so the average price we said was twenty-two thousand. Uh, average dealer cost me about thirteen thousand. Uh, there's going to be a pretty uh, big swing there in terms of our trade-ins because, like I said, the Jeeps hold their value very well. We believe we can make a lot of money on used vehicle sales. So our first our first year projected gross sales in the used department is going to be about it's going to be about seven point nine million, and our cost is going to be about four point six. So we're really going to make a lot of profit here in the used end. Uh, about 3.2 million, <clears throat> and we believe that number again to be higher, uh, especially as we continue to grow and continue to impress our customers with our, our excellent approach and our excellent business model here. Um, in terms of parts, uh, we're going to sell about 120,000 in parts. That's pretty average for uh, Chrysler dealerships, uh, but we believe we're above average here at Morse Jeep, and we're going to uh, we're going to blow those numbers out of the park. Um, our parts cost is going to be about seventy-five thousand, so we're going to have a profit margin of about forty-five thousand in our parts department. So that concludes uh, Morse Jeep. I really hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation, and uh, one of the things we just cannot wait to do is uh, break ground and put together just the most excellent Jeep dealership that's ever been created, and it's going to be Jeep exclusive. So thank you for watching. And we hope to see it more soon.